forgot what church is supposed to be for? Yes, church is designed to prepare you to meet God. Yes. You, your husband, your wife, your children are guilty. You are perverts, you are satanic lovers, and you hate the Bible. That's right. And you're going to hell. You know the false churches, the preacher's wife is called the first lady. But a devil made it worse. <laughs> you got preachers now, they got the first man. That's right. The first man, they got their boyfriend. There's they, some man they done uh, did a fake marriage with. They said that's the first man. And you got dumb, ignorant, hell-deserving people. That's right. Sitting right there and talking about they going to church. <laughs> You're going to a male whorehouse. That's right. Justin Jones a gay pastor at the Powerhouse Church of Miami, recently introduced his partner to the congregation, calling him the first gentleman. This moment quickly went viral, causing a huge stir on social media. Many in the Christian community expressed their strong disapproval. They argued that biblically, there's no such thing as a first lady in the church, let alone a first gentleman. They believe that Pastor Jones's actions go against biblical teachings, and they criticized his congregation for supporting him. The reactions online were intense, with many people posting comments and sharing their opinions. Some praised Pastor Jones, claiming that he's brave and honest and that he's a role model for inclusivity and love. Others, however, were outraged, feeling that this move disrespects their faith and traditions. This controversy has sparked a broader conversation about the role of LGBTQ individuals in religious spaces. Supporters of Pastor Jones argue that love and acceptance should be at the heart of Christian teachings. They believe that the church should be a place where everyone, regardless of their sexual orientation, can worship and lead. On the other hand, true believers of the teachings of the Bible insist that this goes against clear biblical principles, and they worry about the direction in which the church is heading. During a live broadcast, Pastor Gina Jennings responded strongly to Justin Jones introducing his so-called partner as the first gentleman at the Powerhouse Church of Miami. Jennings called this act sinful and condemned it as a direct violation of Christian principles. He didn't hold back, declaring that the powerhouse church of Miami is not a real church but a male whorehouse and a place of the devil. Hear this, have you not read, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male, made and, them female, male and female and said for this cause, for this cause, shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, not cleave to his man, shall cleave to his wife. Barney don't cleave to Fred. No. I said, Barney don't cleave to Fred. That's right. Abbott don't cleave to Costello. That's right. And Jerry don't cleave to Dean Martin. That's right. You I two kissing mustaches. Two. Amen. And two kissing beards. Mm -hmm. You know, the false churches, the preacher's wife is called the first lady. Yeah. But a devil made it worse. <laughs> you got preachers now. They got the first man. That's right. The first man, they got their boyfriend. There's they, some man they done uh, did a fake marriage with. They said that's the first man. Oh, and you got dumb, ignorant, hell-deserving people. That's right. Sitting right there and talking about they going to church. <laughs> You're going to a male whorehouse. That's right. That's all it is. Amen. It's not church. It's a male house of whores. That's it. I didn't stutter. I didn't bite my tongue. No. I said any time a church justifies same-sex marriages, right. it's a house of male whores. Amen. Have you not read? Have you not read? That he which made them at the beginning. He that made them glory to God at the beginning. Made, made them male, male and female. And female. God knew what he was doing. Yes, he did. All right. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father, leave and, mother, father and mother. And shall cleave to his and wife. And cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. It is obvious that the church of Christ is heading this way. We have come so long that people do not care about the image they paint about our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, even if you look at just these pictures, it's clear that even the Pope of the Catholic Church, the man who is now the overseer of the whole Catholic denominations church around the globe, even endorses gay marriage, endorses lesbianism marriage, when he knows perfectly well 
that the Bible frowns upon gay and lesbianism marriage. So why does these preachers continuously preach against the word of God? Is it because they have gone astray? Is it because they do no longer believe in God or they are or they were not even the servants of God to begin with? Now, we know that the call principle of scripture must be applied in the life of every Christian, whether you are a bishop, whether you are an apostle, whether you are a pastor, whether you are an evangelist, whether you are a prophet, whether you are an intercessor, a deacon, a deaconess, whoever you are and whatever you represent in the body of Christ and whatever your call is about, it is necessary that your life reflect exactly what the Bible has gotten to say. Now, anybody that leaves a contrary that lives a life that contradicts scripture is termed as either a fake person who is not a Christian pretending to be or an imposter who God has not called but is deceiving people in the name of God. If you look at if if even if Pope, if Pope can do this, then where has the church got into? I am not surprised that a man can fully present another man in a holy church of God claiming that a man has become his wife and therefore even titles such a foolish act in the church as the first gentleman. You see, these are reasons why some of us, it is very necessary that even if we are not vocal when it comes about the gospel, even if we can't preach loudly or we can't be bold enough to preach exactly what the Bible stands for, then it is necessary that we share certain videos of Pastor Gino Jennings and other few ministers who are very vocal pre preaching the unadulterated gospel, the uncompromised gospel the undiluted or contaminated gospel of Christ because it seems like the people we listen to today have lost their path with God, no longer believe in the Bible, no longer follows what the Bible says. They want to preach water and drink wine. They want to preach the Bible and again at the same time disobey everything the Bible stands for. Listen, as a Christian, this should be a typical proof that we are living in the end times and that your relationship with God must solely, must solely dependent on you, not on any other preacher. Because there are many people that continuously depends on other ministers of the gospel to have a better relationship with God. Where we are heading as a church, where we are heading as a Christendom, or as the followers of Christ, if you don't get to know God through your personal sacrifices, devotions, reading of the scriptures, praying, fasting, and learning the Bible for yourself, you are going to be led astray by a corn preacher by a false prophet, by a false apostle, by a false teacher of the gospel, someone that God has in called. Remember when, when Paul was speaking to the Philippians, he said that he came to understand that there are three different kinds of ministers. There are others that ministers the gospel because of their stomach. There are others that ministers the gospel out of envy. Some preach because of clouds. Some preach because of money. Some preach because they want to be heard. Others are preaching because they want to be loved. Others are preaching because they want to also be notified. They want to be seen in the lame light. So the idea of preaching is all centered about them. And then Paul added, now the last type of preachers are the kind that preaches solely from their hearts. And these are ones that God has truly called and has anointed to preach the unadulterated gospel, the uncontaminated gospel, the gospel that is not compromised. Listen, if Pope can compromise a gospel, the gospel that it is normal, it is okay for gays to be blessed in the house of God, 
for lesbians to be blessed in the house of God. This is an indication and alarming that we are living in the end times that your relationship with God to know God better to understand the dealings the activities of God the workings of God is solely dependent on you and you must come of age where you no longer rely you no longer depends on other ministers to have a better relationship with the spirit of God or with God himself because it is very shaming that this same preacher who introduces another man to his congregation claiming that a man has become his wife and also knows that the Bible in the book of Genesis speaks about what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible again speaks when Paul is writing to the Corinthians where Paul said that do not be deceived that the homosexuals can never and shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They know scripture is vividly true and scripture is totally against their actions, against these types of behavior. So how does a minister of God continuously to go on? Where did he even gather the courage to stand before the holy people of God that Jesus Christ himself with his precious blood suffered and was crucified, was spitted on, was slapped, was mistreated, was mocked, was, was teased to die and redeem off to present a so-called wife to the people of God. This is an indication that you don't depend on a minister of the gospel thinking that they have come of age or they know God better. It is a lie. It is out of order. It is something that scripturally, scripturally condemns that no one should follow, that no one should even ever try to do that. Where did he got the courage from? He's not even ashamed that the Bible right from Genesis God said that God made male and female for his purpose. Why is this one contradicting scripture in the name of revelation? Men have become addicted to abominable things. Men have become addicted to certain weird behaviors, to certain types of sins. Men and pastors have become slaves to different kinds and types of sins that the Bible continuously condemns. And this is one of them. It is very sad that a whole man of God could do this in the house of God. This is not a better example to follow. Scripture condemns and this is not a holy thing. This is unrighteous thing. This is something scripture condemns. No Christian should copy this. No Christian should follow this. No Christian should emulate this. Again, this, these are the reasons why often when we look at Pastor Gino Genis and the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ, we continuously give God thanks and praise for their life, especially for his vocality and his ability to preach the unadulterated word of God, the uncompromising, the uncontaminated or diluted gospel. And we thank God for him and we thank God for believers around the world. Indeed, the world is coming to an end. Say a word of prayer for other Christians around the world and stand together with them. We are within the end time. See you again in my next episode. This is Ibel Global Prayers.